Hi, this is Renee, Custom Scrap by Renee, and I'm back again um, to do the last two elephants of that school time elephant file from Marjorie Ann Designs. And um, I already got the accessories glued, chalked and glued and put together and pink the little toenail. So all we have to do is the um, elephants themselves. And so we can go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use Catherine Polar inks and I'm gonna use hoodie as the color for the elephants. And it may look a little dark, but it does lighten up um, quite a bit. And I'm going to get the edge of it nice and dark. And then we're going to go on top of it like a night or perpendicular with the sponge dauber to the per paper piece and kind of try to blend in some of the gray color onto the paper piece. Um, you want to use a lot lighter touch than when you did the edge of it. Where we're just pulling in some of the gray. Right there on the right there in that corner. That just gives it a, a little bit more um, color, I think, than just inking the edge of it. Um, And it's your own preference if you'd like just to ink the edge. This is kind of a comparison to what they would look like. This is just with the, the edge inked and this is with pulling some color into your paper piece. And I like it with the extra color. Um, takes a little bit longer. Um, but I like the the result of, of taking the extra time to ink or to, to ink it. And you want your sponge dauber um, to be a little bit dry. You don't want it too wet when you're pulling in that color, or it'll. Get it all pulling, and it'll be really dark. Um, you won't like what you see. Just perpendicular and add some dark color to your edge and then turn it perpendicular and add some color and, 
and you can start however far it looks like I go about maybe a half an inch and then go out to the edge and if you don't want that much then you know you can go um, a little bit less really depends on the size of your, of your paper of your piece of paper um, And always be sure to, to turn your your um, sponge dauber around because you've got ink on the other side as well. like on the leg of course you're not going to go in the half an inch because that would be the whole leg and then I'll just go in just a little bit enough to give it some color. And I got these sponge daubers off of Amazon and I really should start paying attention for you guys to how much they cost because I got like 21 of them and I know it was under $20 and um, you can use a finger dauber if that's what you like I don't like finger daubers only because I would I mean, it feels like I would use it one finger dauber per piece and I just, they just never worked for me very well. I mean, I have finger daubers, but I just don't use them and, um, but you can use finger daubers. Um, I just, I like these and they last for me, they last a long time. Um, because I have one for every color and so I um, like this one um, I've had probably for three months already and um, 
it's in in perfect condition and you know depending on how often I use this color it'll last for another three four months or maybe even longer um, I think I finally had to change one of my Stampin' Up! ones because it finally just got too um, too rough around the edge or it was just falling apart. But for me, they last a lot longer and so... And I've been paper piecing. Um, I've been scrapbooking for over 20 years, but I've been doing paper piecing um, ever since um, it was years ago when um, that one gentleman came out with that um, way to um, that software that you could buy so that you could hook your Cricut, your original Cricut that used the cartridges up to the computer and it could print, it could cut um, SVG files and that was from your old Cricut. Um, and then he got in a big lawsuit with Cricut and they won and he had to delete that part of the program out um so I've been paper piecing that long and when he had to delete that then I that's when I sold my Cricut and bought a machine um that was compatible with the software so I could still do the SBG files and um cut them and so I know that probably been at least 15 years ago that that happened um you know and now Cricut now you can do SVG files with with the Cricut Explorer and all that and and the Cameo And I used a program that was called Make the Cut. And, um, used that for many years. And, uh, then the guy just kind of disappeared. Um, quit making any updates to it. Quit doing anything to it. So, um, I still have it on my um, computer and I still use it. I can't, it doesn't, um, 
I can't cut from that program. I can do my SVG files and everything and I have to save them and then load them into shortcuts a lot. But make the cut is really just a, it's a really great software. It's really easy to maneuver and to copy, paste, duplicate. And it's just really easy to work in. And so it sounds like, you know, I do <laughs> double the work because I do it first and make the cut and then I save it and then I um, open them all up and sure cuts a lot um, so that I can cut them out. Um, but it's not really that much extra work make the cut is just so much easier than sure cuts a lot to create SVG files to be cut out. It's pretty, it's limited because it's so old, but excuse, excuse me, that's when I can go to um, I can either go to uh, um, Cricut Nuts design space or it can go to silhouette um design space and you know if I need one of those because I have a cameo 4 and a Cricut Explore 3 but I don't hardly use the Cricut at all I just found that Cricut design space is just really not didn't feel very easy to work in and maybe that's just because I haven't um, worked in it enough to really get comfortable in it. Cameo 4 I found it's a lot easier to, to work in. And I usually take that if I go to like a scrapbook retreat. I usually take my cameo. Um, and here I use, it's called the Skycut uh, C24 um, plotting cutter, but basically it's a 24 inch um, digital cutter. Um, from and maker is Skycut. And I had a zing and um, when they quit making the zing, then this was what he recommended was the sky plotting cutter. And so That's what I went ahead and purchased, and I really like it. It can do, you know, it can do multiple um, materials, and it print and cut, and it can do everything that the Cricut can do, or the Cameo. I mean, it can do all of that, and plus it's 24 inches wide, so I can do really wider things with it. So 
that's my go-to machine. And it runs off of, um, it will run off sure cuts a lot is a software. It'll run off other softwares, but that's the one that I use. Um, and it's one where you, I would purchase my own, that's where I would purchase my own SVG files. So I wouldn't have to have, um, you know, you don't have to have like Cricut des Design Space be running in order to work with your files because they're your files and you can and your software so you can run it and do it however you want that makes it nice you're not at the The whim of when Cricut Design Space decides to go down, and then you know you can't do anything. So I do like that aspect of it. And then I just pull these up gently and they fit right into these little containers that I got. Um, you can get these from Michael's, uh, Hobby Lobby, Joanne. They come in a container like this. Um, and I just labeled each one with the color and then I had to separate my colors. So these are the blues and the dark brown in this container and they just fit right in there and keep some I think safe and keep them from drying out as much and this one is going to be pink and it's Catherine Puller Be Mine is the color. And I like Catherine Puller inks. They're dye inks. They're not um, archival inks. So I know that they're gonna fade. But she offers a lot of really pretty and vibrant colors and I like that you know um, they're not gonna fade probably in my lifetime and when my kids get my albums I don't think they're gonna care that my elephants have faded in gray because I don't think it makes really that much of a difference to them. So that's why, you know, I'm not bent on using archival inks. You can, you know, if that's a big concern of yours. Um, camera. Sorry.
and see how I'm just pulling the color as it gets darker to lighter in. And then do these little guys. And you can use a uh, pom pom to get into these grooves if you want. Then after this video is completed, um, then the next video will be doing um, the scrapbook pages to um, this file. And I have them started over there, so I think they're going to be really cute. It's having a nice day. End up with a nice sunny day after our tornado watch this morning.
And like I said, I always like to tilt their head just a tiny bit. Um, that's just me. on top of some books. Terrible. One thing I need to do before I put that on. That is put the little toenails on.
use a lot of glue. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. But I think with art glitter glue, you don't need to. Um, my, my paper slip right there. Okay. Since it is, you know, it glues so well, if I can hold on to my piece, I don't think that you need, you know, a ton of it. And people might disagree with me, but.
not gonna put anything in the right up here because I'm gonna put there. Put their eyes underneath there. nails on him. Kind of funny without 
that third toenail. Start with the eyelashes and I'm just going to do straight ones. doing very good at not touching the white. black I got in the eyes. my eyelashes um never come out the same and I don't mind that only because I want them to be um unique because everybody is unique
so you should all you look unique as well I take this unibother pen right here and I'm just gonna try to right along the lash line and start at the bottom. And, so, and just go up. at the bottom because that's where it's supposed to be thicker and then it should narrow as you come up to the top. a little too much up there so I'm just gonna erase it I have this mono tombo elastin eraser and um, don't try to wipe it away because it will just smear eye there. You don't want to wipe it away. Just take your and blow it away. If it didn't go out of way, then you could go ahead and pick your eraser and erase it. pastel chalk and the color is neutral gray very dark and then I take a magenta pan pastels and um, you don't have to do this I just do it I like it I like the effect and then I just go back over the line that I just made with the black 
and I go back over it with the magenta. And you don't have to do it. I just like it adds a little bit of um, color to their extra color to their eyes. any excess. have this um, dark gray chalk pencil that I got from Amazon and it's called General General's Pastel Chalk. And then I have the Uniball uh, rollers that I use um, for the eyes. And with these, you just do a really light touch. It works a lot better. Um, 
to make the round part of the eye. Make sure you don't have any um, chalk or anything like that on it from where I fixed it. <coughs> Excuse me. lots of different ways to do eyes so just whatever you're comfortable with doing titanium white pan pastels and I like to highlight right here around the eye and I try to stay away from the magenta but as you can see I don't always stay away from it brighten up their their eyes even more and we do a little bit down in the middle And I like using the blending brush because um, it blends stuff pretty well. It's too much. And if you get too much of it, you can always erase it.
And this is probably the reason why my videos take so long. And I apologize. But, you know, I want you guys to see, you know, how, how I do everything. I mean, I don't have anything um, that you magically need to hide. You know, I want you to learn how to do it the way that I do it. Um, you know, in eyes and lashes, they do take a long time and faces, but you know, that's also the funnest part is the faces. You know, turning these little pieces into creative beings, you know, that's the funnest part of the whole thing. And you can all put this stuff together and ink it, but this is what, to me, is the, the fun part is trying to make them, you know, look real and or, you know, out, make them and then I have this brush stick from Imagine it's got like a pencil tip on it and just put one little drop dot here one little dot here and then make a circle And then I do take the the diamond glaze and uh, put it over their the black part of their eyes. And it's an adhesive dimensional
that are here, so my hands are a mess. Didn't do as good this time. And there's the last two elephants from our School Time Elephants SVG file, Marjorie Ann Designs. And I hope you like it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, and I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I'll be back later. Um, with the scrapbook pages um, to put these uh, cute elephants into a scrapbook page um, and that will probably be tomorrow so I just want to thank everybody and have a really great day and we'll talk to you in a couple of days thanks bye